coming up on this episode of the Spiro podcast. We're going to answer some just general business questions, if, if I'm correct, Todd. Welcome to the Spiro podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business with your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magro. Hi, and welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. Spiro is a software platform designed to help you manage and grow your day-to-day -day real estate visual marketing company. I'm your host, Craig Magrum. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're all about growing your business, sharing business knowledge in the real estate media field. And with us each and every week, our co-host and Spiro founder and owner, Todd Kivimaki. Welcome back, Todd. Craig, hello. It's great to be here. Good to uh, be back on with all of you all. Sorry we took a week off last week, but have some exciting things in the show today and just great to be back on. And it is busy season. Holy cow. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. All of a sudden, <laughs> it's like the floodgates opened. Yeah. It's like uh, we felt like our head was sewn to the carpet or hair was on fire. Use whatever ever expression you want but we're feeling it at our company so hopefully that means you are too and i told the team this this morning on our friday morning meeting that we have once a week is that we're doing numbers and at our real estate media company we're going to eclipse any numbers in the past that we've ever done i, I, I had what a I chuckle did, the okay yeah. so for those of you that might not know there was uh, on april the 8th we had an eclipse total, you know, totality, full lunar solar eclipse go through uh, our neck of the woods. Actually, the, the center line was almost directly right over our main office, wasn't it, Todd? It, it was, yes. Yeah. So uh, there was a bunch of hype. So, yeah, for this part of the world, it was a big day on, on Monday the 8th. So I saw what you did yes. there, Todd. <laughs> yeah, excuse. And, and I didn't even do it. I have to admit, I stole it from Steve in our meeting because Steve did it this morning. So I'm not I'm even contact. that clever. I just... I'm lazy and I, I reuse things. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a colleague that said, hey, if you, if you steal it from me, you've stolen twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. That's true for me. Right. Anyway. Okay. So, yeah. So I told the team this morning that we are going, we are heading towards numbers and volume that we have never done before. Now, we've done a lot of jobs before. We did 12,000 jobs two years ago, just over 10,000 last year. We think that's going to, and I don't want to jinx, but we think that's going to be upwards to 14,000 this year. So those yeah. that is a big jump considering we go from 10,000 to 14,000 in a year. So I just reminded the team that we're going to break the shell. <laughs> so think of your business as this shell and... In order to grow the shell, you have to put cracks in the shell. Cracks are painful. Cracks need some attention. Mm -hmm. But cracks are a good thing if you want to grow. So sometimes we just have to step back when we are very busy. And I, I'm not saying it's not stressful. I'm not saying right. that your clients aren't rude. I'm not saying that you aren't doing more and working longer than you ever have. But I'm saying that if you want to grow your business, those cracks are a good thing because they conclude that you are growing. So just if that's you this morning and you're listening and it's been a long week or you're back on the road again and you are maybe dreading it a little bit after a nice weekend off, some of those feelings are natural. That's just you being a human. Try to take your thoughts above the line. Look at the positive you've done. And I'm a firm believer, and I know you are, Craig, as well, that the glass is always half full. <laughs> and yes, I might be a little naive on some things, but I would rather be a little naive and be positive because I believe that can take me further than being pessimistic and negative on everything. So right. give yourself the credit for what you're doing. It's not easy. If it was yeah. easy, everyone would do it. Right. And I, let me be real, Todd, you were very kind and to say, C Craig, I'm sure you're the same way. The glass is half full. Even even trying to live that way, there are times, though, where it does flip a little bit and you do kind of get a little pessimistic. You can get pessimistic and see the glass is half empty. And I would just encourage you, 
during those times, take a step back, take a breath. That's what Spiro actually means is take a breath and surround yourself with some people that are going to speak life to you and breathe some life into you and, and just encourage you because we can't do this on our own. Being a business owner, a lot of times it feels like you're on your own and sometimes you are, but try and be purposeful in surrounding yourself with people that will invest back into you and get that, that mindset and that outlook changed back around to that optimistic look that you're known for. Yeah, I, I agree. And Craig, I might just be sp speaking out on a limb here, maybe too much. And maybe this is going to cause you to turn this thing off <laughs> and, and that's okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe this will just be too much for you. But um, one thing that I've, I've done lately, my wife, is incredibly intelligent and insightful and always calm, you know? So we had a, we had a day yesterday, a day in quotations and every, you know, the clock, we shot a ton of tours. Clients were unhappy. Like they're always going to be <laughs> and not percentage wise more, but just more of them were unhappy. It's a little bit harder to get on the schedule. People, agents are a little more busy, so they wait a little bit longer. They mm -hmm. want it all tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yeah. And then when they do something, they want you to change it, even though they've done it and it's not their fault and they're grumpy and they're angry. And we had a little bit of bickering among the team because we were all stressed out and busy. And, you know, it was just I felt like I was trying to manage emotions yesterday. And I was preparing two presentations and no violin for Todd. Like I, I, I loved the day. It was great. And, and it was fitting that as I went to go walk out, I looked up at the ceiling in the office and I don't know, for some reason, it, something caught my eye and I looked up at the ceiling and of course I have a leak in the roof <laughs> and, and I just smiled and I was like, that is just a complete fitting into the day that now it's been raining for two days here in Ohio. My roof is leaking. And when I bought the building, it had a new roof. So I never thought the roof was going to need any adjustment, but that is just life. So yeah. let me fast forward, go home, talk to my wife, Jessica about some things. And, and she's like, do you ever pray for these people like in their office? Hmm. And I'm like, and again, if this makes you turn it off, then I'm, I'm sorry. But and, and even I thought I was like, what? and they're like, well, that's kind of uncomfortable. Like, but no, I don't. And, and I did this morning and I did for the team. And, and that is important to me, I think being intentional. And I think no matter what your feelings are, like, I believe truly that God is my source of joy and he can do everything and he is going to provide for me. So why wouldn't I lean on him? So that was one thing that I'm doing. If you're a believer, if you're not praying for those around you, then, then I would encourage you to. And my incredibly intelligent and thoughtful wife was like, well, why aren't you doing this? It's like, <laughs> well, why aren't I? So it, and if that makes you uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but not sorry. But that was something that my wife shared with me that I'm practicing now and literally went into the offices this morning. And, um, and I, and you know, I'm excited about what the future is going to bring. And I trust that he is going to have a plan for me. So yeah, that's my soapbox, Craig. And, you know, well, thanks for listening to me, but I, that's I good. do believe that there's a lot to it. Yeah. You know, it, there, there's times you said, no, I, I don't pray for people. And, you know, there's times where even if you're a solid believer and you have a strong faith in God, you go through desert times and times where you get involved in your work day and you just kind of, it's not that you're trying to do it on purpose, but you kind of forget about God because we've just got mm -hmm. so many immediate things that we have to address right in the moment. And, you know, funny enough, this came up, I'm part of a, a men's leadership cohort at our church. And we talked about that exact uh, situation where we're in our workday and it's easy to just get caught up in our day-to-day -day activities. And there's nothing wrong with that. We have responsibilities. We have work we have to do. We're called to be productive, right? But rather than relegate God to a Sunday morning, if we truly say we believe what we believe, then he should be part of every moment of our life, including our work. But man, it's so easy to forget about that in in the hustle and the bustle, especially of a busy season, right? Um, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, what a good reminder. And our wife, man, our wives, <laughs> our spouses, if you're a, you know, a woman watching this as well, or if you have a spouse, what a, <laughs> now we might have tough times with them. We, we all do, you know, relationships yeah. aren't perfect, but what a blessing they are, especially when they compliment us and encourage us to keep our focus where it needs to be. So that kudos to Jessica for doing that. Gail does the same thing for me. She'll very lovingly, very gently, Hey, have you considered this? <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Craig, yes, you and I picked some good ones. Uh, it's important though. And seriously, you know, if I look back over the growth of WOW and Spiro and she, you know, my wife was always there for me. It's important to have good support. And if you don't have that person right now, find those people in your life. I'm not saying you have to go out and find that spouse, you know, right, a significant right. other, but find a support system in your life. It's incredibly important because when you feel like it's all you, I went through periods of my life where I felt like it was, I had to do everything. It was all on my shoulders. No one could help me. And those were some really really tough years of my life. Mm. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's shift gears and get into things uh, before, well, before we get into our, our main uh, subject material this week, uh, some Spiro wins happening right yes. now. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to read them here. So I'm going to look away okay. from the camera, but uh, Kenny with rep sent this over about one of his coaching students, Tyler and Tyler messaged in and said, I hit the 15 K month mark. And it's yes. no coincidence. Yes. And it's no coincidence that less than a month since I switched to Spiro, it's been less than a month since I switched to Spiro and raised prices. So awesome. Super excited. Yeah. Got in there, made the switch, got his packages, bundles, made some adjustment to his prices, made it easier for agents to order more. And he hit 15 K. So what an accomplishment. Yeah. Great job, Tyler. Awesome. Another one, Marcus. So Marcus said, I made my first merge fleet video yesterday at the last job. I shot for free for a client just to give it a shot. I'm excited to sell more of these on my transactions, which is cool. Like, I think it's pretty cool. He went through the, he did some of the training and then he's like, Hey, just impromptu. Do you want a video? And he shot one, but this mm -hmm. was cool. This was even the better, this message after he said, I had an old client from three years ago, hit me up and ask me if my pricing has changed. Originally, he wanted my two ninety nine package, but then after realizing he could, I could get them a video for one forty nine, he said his budget opened up, and he ended up purchasing over six hundred dollars worth of services and booked fully through Spiro. Awesome! It Holy was an incredible. Moly. He's, it was an incredible moment, and I'm really thankful to be part of Spiro. I'm very, very excited to continue to grow into the full Spiro workflow. That's awesome. Man, that's exciting. Yeah, so that that's pretty cool. You, you know, you see double what the client wanted to, wanted to order. And this is just, this is the power that our real estate media company, Wild Video Tours, have had, and we've done forever. We've always coupled video. We've always given video. When I started 20 years ago, and it seemed like next year was always going to be the year of the video. And it still seems like that. I said that for 20 years, like this year, next year is the year of video. And there's never going to be like a year of video. Video is a huge proponent of marketing. No matter what you look at out there, all of the social media channels favor it. It's more captivating. It can create emotion and you've got this cool tool that we call the merge fleet that allows you to go out and be creative and shoot and we have training for you we tell you how to do it it's free training you can come back upload your clips and for as little as ten dollars that edit will be done for you and you'll have a sellable product you know i'm just reading through the lines here a little bit but marcus said i could get them a video for yeah he charged 149 so hmm. 149 your cost is ten dollars you're in the house like 20 minutes and we tell you how to shoot it we give you all the training right i mean if you're yeah. saying hey i don't do video i i know photos i i really like taking photos but i have no clue about video we've done the hard work for you ryan my head my director of training who's done this for over a decade, knows video, teaches video. He created the course, it's out there, it's free, and you can add video 
to your services and then you can start putting it online in your Spiro shopping cart and you can be and you can if you're used to taking a 299 order you can be pleasantly surprised that there's a $600 plus order sitting for you that you <laughs> didn't have to do anything you didn't have to upsell it's just sitting there waiting for you to go and shoot I started with photo only when I first started my business before I had teamed up with Wow and 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 Spiro eventually and I, I went through the video training as well. Folks, I'm telling you, this training is so well laid out and so thorough and down to earth that if I can do it, <laughs> anybody can do it. Did, didn't we train, didn't Ryan train his daughter as well in this course? Yeah. So Ryan has an 11, well, she was 11 at the time, 11 year old daughter, Stella. And he trained her that, that was our, that, that was our, well, I don't want to use test dummy. I, you know, like, <laughs> that was our figuratively test dummy. Let's hope Ryan doesn't watch year, this. <laughs> yeah, we, we, she's almost like a daughter to me. I know Stella well. So um, literally we took his 11 year old daughter through the training and she shot really good video, cinematic walkthrough videos that the merge fleet edited. Yep. So if she can do it, you can do it. Right. Right. Great way to grow your business. Hey, if, if you want more information uh, about what Spiro is, maybe this is your first time tuning in and, or you've been listening for a while and uh, you are curious about Spiro or the Merge Fleet, you can visit Spiro.media. There's a demo on there. There's features and benefits on there. There's a chat bubble if you have questions. Also, once you sign up and it's free to sign up, we also give you 20 credits to play with. So you can sign up, you can have a system. There's a full nine step video series to get you up and running in a couple of hour, two, two or three hour time blocks. You can go through the series, be completely up and running, have that on your order page and get mm -hmm. those orders coming in for you. Right. And if you're like, Hey, I I'm just really comfortable with my system. We know there's some other good systems out there. Yep. Of course we think we do things better. But if you want to add video, you can just use the merge fleet as standalone. Sign up for Spiro. It's in there. You can run as many test projects you would like through the system, and it's free. So once you log into Spiro, click merge fleet, upload your clips, click test output. It's free. We put a watermark on there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't cost you anything. You can train for free. We have all the training for you. So um, some really great tools for you to grow your business. They're things that we use. They're kind of like our hidden secrets, hidden gems, and we're happy to give them to you. It's taken us 20 years to get here, and we're happy to share them with you. Our, our whole thing is we like to see you succeed. That, I mean, that's the purpose of this podcast is we, we talk about the business side of, of real estate media, right? There's a lot of great channels, YouTube channels and podcasts out there on the creative side, fantastic information that we encourage you to check those things out. But we want you to have a solid business that is sustainable and you can grow as well to take care of yourself, your family, your, you know, your loved ones and, and your clients, obviously. So yeah, we're, we're happy to celebrate your successes with you. Yeah. And, and it's so interesting that I'll be done with this shortly, Craig, but I, if I, if you think about like how life changing it is to like hit that first 15 K month, you know, Tyler hit his 15, 15, how would that change your life to have a business that, you have started and you own this thing. This is your baby and you hit 15K. We had another listener. We had another viewer last night, uh, Eli Jones and I, we did a, 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 a YouTube live on metrics. If you'd like mm -hmm. to check it out, go over to YouTube, search uh, at it's Eli Jones and click the live tab. But we talked all about metrics and Jeremy message. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I, I went to metrics and he's like, I realized I did a 35K last month. And I believe oh, wow. he's a single photographer. What? I believe, yes, I believe he's a single photographer. He might have one part-time person, but I believe it's mostly him. And, um, you know, that's really cool. Like all those metrics are in there. The metrics that we run, you know, we do a few million dollars a year in our business. That's all there for you to realize what your business is. Um, it's, it's a track to run on and we're excited to hear all this, uh, you know, great feedback about how your business is growing. Yep. Absolutely. Alrighty. Well, some great wins. Thanks for sharing those, Todd. That's awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Well, anything else, any updates for Spiro before we dive into uh, the, the main meat of the topic this week? 
we've got exciting things coming up. We just did a soft launch of translation. Uh, okay. I know some of you, this does not impact, but we had a lot of international users and there's no one that translates out there. So that is launched and that's in there. If you'd like to be included in the pre-launch, uh, let us know. It's, it's by invite only. So just message us in the portal. Um, that's coming. A lot of UI finesses, vertical for a merge fleet, lots of cool things coming, but let's get on with the show. I've talked a lot yeah. about Spiro. This is a okay. shameless plug for Spiro, rightfully so. <laughs> but yeah, well, the Facebook groups that uh, talk about real estate photography and videography and, and whatnot always have such great questions, a lot of spirited mm -hmm. debate and input and, and whatnot. So we thought we'd uh, we'd take some some uh, listener and and viewer and participant uh, questions. And just kind of answer some of those questions. This isn't necessarily meant to be um, answer questions about Spiro, but we're answering just questions about business in general and in real estate photography and video. And, and uh, if if you are looking, and I say this because the last time we did a, a user's uh, question episode, we we got a little bit of feedback. Hey, are you going to give some uh, answer some questions about Spiro or do some tutorials and whatnot. You can get all of that at our website. I just want to give this to you right now, just so you know what to expect in, in the next few minutes. You can get all that tutorial information and answers about questions about Spiro at Spiro.media. And uh, in the top nav, there is a link called Knowledge Base. If you click on Knowledge Base, there's a lot of great information, tutorial videos, tutorial articles, uh, a lot of FAQs on the Spiro software. And that would be the best place for you to go uh, to find that kind of information. So we're going to answer some just general business questions, if, if I'm correct, Todd. We are, yeah. I went through the groups. I typed out the first five. I thought they were all good questions. They're going to vary a little bit. Some are mm -hmm. business, some aren't. But I thought this would be a great round robin. And also, if you have questions, email us hello at spiro.media. We'll throw them mm -hmm. on here, give you a plug, and give you an answer. There you go. All right. So what is the first question you ran across? Yes. First question, Craig, what is the best way to study for your part 107? <laughs> Well, uh, I'll give my initial, it's been a while since I studied. I don't have to renew for another year, I think. Um, but the FAA provides a study guide that you can download right from the, the part 107 website. I don't remember what that link is right now, uh, but I'm sure you'll answer that. But I also, when I first got my license, I subscribed uh, to a service called remote pilot 101. I believe it is mm. .com. Um, shoot. I forget the guy's name. He's down in Ocala, Florida, really good guy. I'm going to have to go back and find that information. But uh, I, I subscribe to that study course. He, he updates videos with the changing rules and regulations. And every time I have to renew my part 107, I just go back to that website and go through the tutorial videos and, and study that way as well. Awesome. I, I, gotta, I have to raise my hand here that I, I've never studied for it because I don't have it. I, I remember y'all, I'm the old person here in the room. I used a fly drone before you had to have had a 107. So that is, that is, you know, I, I we flew them before there was no Phantom. Like you had the piecemeal <laughs> engines and batteries and transmitters and receivers together. And it was like this Frankencopter. And <laughs> Franken there was nothing, no, the 107 wasn't even a thing. So that's the last time I flew a drone. Um, but I've gone to our wow training that Ryan has put together. He's linked a few documents here. I'm just going to give them to you. Uh, that FAA document, Craig, I believe is called remote pilot, small unmanned aircraft systems, airman certification standards. So if you search that, uh, I have the URL here, it's, but it's on FAA.gov. But if you search that, that's a PDF. We have that linked in our training. Also, uh, Ryan has linked, they have a study uh, guide. So again, on the FAA website, remote pilot, small unmanned aircraft system study guide. Uh, that is something that we give our photographers. And then on YouTube, and there's a ton on YouTube. I know there are, but this is just the one we have linked. It is by Tony and Chelsea Northup. It's called free drone certification study guide, FAA part 107 SUAS test. There's probably lots out there. They have great content. If, if you've never watched their channel before, uh, just photography in general. I recognize that name when you said it. 
Oh, I have to check. I, I I feel embarrassed to say I have not checked them out, but I'm gonna do it. And and um, yeah, give give them a give them a look and um, go study for that thing and go take it. Okay, Craig. Question number two: mm -hmm. How do you communicate to your realtors that Cuba Casa floor plans are not to be used for official MLS measurements? Hmm. Well, does that depend on the MLS? It does because some MLSs throughout the country, they require, um, they require dimension or they require total square footage for the house. Typically, you get total square footage by measuring each room and then adding up the rooms, or you can take the exterior minus the wall thickness and a few other things. But yes, there are some MLSs that do require that. And then others that don't. So, Craig, most of ours, they you can put your measurements into the MLS, but there's no standard to say that these measurements need to be accurate. They need to be taken by a professional, and they need to be within 5% accuracy. Right. I was going to say, because I know one of our markets is very strict on that, but the market it, that I'm in and serve, there's, th those requirements don't exist. Yes, Craig, correct. In one of our markets, Charlotte, North Carolina, they do have that requirement that accurate room measurements need to be provided. And what we do, because we use Cubicasa to scan, and we know that it cannot be used to meet those requirements. So we put down that the floor plans are for marketing only. And actually in it, we state that they're not to be used for dimension or total square footage. Um, and then also one other step beyond that, because a lot of people, you know, they'll only read so much <laughs> of your description. We literally, we call those individuals and just confirm when they do order those measurements. So if it's a, if it's mm -hmm. a client that's never ordered measurements before we call them because we still find that they see measurements on the order page, like, Oh, great. Or they see floor plan, and they don't pick up for the fact, they don't pick up right away that we say it's for marketing only. Mm -hmm. Don't use this for measurements. They don't read that. So we call them and say, hey, you know, thanks so much for the order. I see that you ordered our floor plan option. Uh, I do just want to make sure that you understand that this is just for marketing. So you'll, we'll scan it. You'll get a floor plan. These are rough measurements. They cannot be used to meet the MLS requirements. But I just wanted to make sure that, that that you still wanted this, that you wanted us to keep floor plan on your order. Or did you want to change it and hire another company to do the floor plan? I'll bet you they appreciate that phone call and the honesty and the integrity that we're providing as a company when we do that. They they do. And and even though sometimes sometimes it's like, yeah, I'll use it. It's no problem because some of them are, they don't, I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for them, but some of them it's like, yeah, I'm just going to use it. But some of them don't understand that and they do appreciate that. And even though they have to call another provider that's licensed in that state to do it, it's being proactive with your clients. Mm -hmm. And also that call is a lot easier to make than receiving the call yes. from an Back. unhappy agent who right. is like, why did you give me measurements that are 300 or 500 square feet less yep. than what? the last measurements were a year ago when the house sold. Yep. Not a fun conversation to have to have. No, not at all. So that's the way we do it. Pick and choose what you want from there. There you go. All right. Question number three. Question number three. What file size do you deliver your high quality and web images to your clients? Good question. I'm, I'm yes. not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, I, I just I sat I sat there for a minute because I I should have picked up on that quicker that you were passing it back to me. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not answering that. I don't know that off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, what we do, and we've done it for a long time: three thousand pixels on the long end, the horizontal side, at three hundred DPI for high quality images. A three thousand by three hundred DPI, you can print that sucker pretty big. Okay, you're not going to a billboard, but you're printing anything that the agent needs, any type of publication. Then inside of Spira, we have our system set for 2000 pixels 
at 72 DPI. So Spiro is going to automatically resize for you. You can pick anything from 2,500 pixels and below. Uh, some of this is it might be good to make a quick phone call to your MLS and ask if they have any requirements mm -hmm. for photos that the agents upload to the MLS. Because they're all different. Let me ask this question then, Todd. Does Spiro uh, offer an option to set a custom size, say, because of a, a different requirement that an, an MLS might have? Yeah, great question. It does. So you can just go right into your settings, my company, and then you will be able to set. So if your MLS says, hey, we really need them at 1500 pixels, mm -hmm. then you can go in there and select 1500. Just a, a quick user tip is typically an MLS isn't going to tell you the pixels that they need. They're going to tell you a size requirement, a limit. Mm -hmm. So if you're finding that your files are too large, then go ahead and go into settings, my company, and make your web optimized image size a little bit lower and see what that does to the file size. That's how you can get your agents what they need to go to the MLS. Got it. Good information. Craig, number four, any recommendations on insurance? It's a good <laughs> question. See, not a fun one, but it's a good one. Now, remember a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, you made fun of me for saying that we should talk about insurance. Oh, Craig, you're talking about the exciting stuff there. See, legitimate question right here. I feel I vindicated. feel like I would never give you a hard time or make fun of you. Craig. I, I, I feel vindicated right now. <laughs> legitimate and business I, question. <laughs> and I'm even the one that that found these questions. Why did I not leave that off the question list? <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this one. <laughs> you should. You should leave. I'll take this one. Okay. You enjoy this one. This is a great question. It's an easy answer. Yes. Call someone local. Yeah. Don't fill out online. No, no. Don't do it yourself. Call someone local. If you don't know someone local, call, call an aid, real estate agent. They know an insurance person. Call your mother. <laughs> then call that. <laughs> right. Mom. Then call the insurance. Yeah, mom, who do we use for insurance? Right. Then call that person and say, hey, I've started a business or I have a business. This is what I do. I just want to make sure that I'm protected. I have a few questions about liability insurance. What about equipment insurance? Will you insure my drone? Whatever your questions are, take it to them and then ask them, do you see any other places where I might have some liability where I need coverage? Yeah, They might have some great suggestions as to how you need to be protected. Uh, I use a local guy in Lima. And um, so if you're in Ohio, you can use him. This is a shameless putt pitch because he's a good buddy of mine. But Michael Sarno with Web Insurance, W-E-B-B Insurance, look him up. Um, he's taken care of me forever. He saved me a lot of headache. And uh, it's great to work with a local company. And speaking of Michael, Todd, I don't know if, well, you should remember this, but early in the early days of our podcast, we actually had Michael join us on the podcast to talk about mm -hmm. insurance. And uh, we'll put a, we'll put a link uh, um, in the uh, description and uh, maybe even one of those cards that you can click on, on the video. If you're watching YouTube, uh, that links you back to that, that video as well. If, if you want to check that out. Yes. It's one of those things that, it's like, oh, I have to be an adult and go get it. <laughs> yes, yep. you do. But when something bad happens yeah. and you have it, there's a sense of security that, wow, you're taken care of because it can be devastating mm -hmm. if you don't have it. Right. Yeah. Ask about umbrella policies and you know, just get educated on what you need. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one, Craig. Yeah. Because it's been raining a lot here lately. <laughs> but <-oops. laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Sorry. Next that was question. Pretty bad Last part. <laughs> that was really bad. All right, y'all can boo me. We need a button where you can boo me. Like just boo. <laughs> We're gonna get hey, thumbs Craig. downs on the on the YouTube channel. <laughs> is Do that it. on there? <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> Please, y'all. We love you. We're we're nice. Don't thumbs down us. Okay, Craig. Do you have a pre shoot? checklist that you send to your clients. Yes, we do. And it goes out with every uh, appointment confirmation sent out from Spiro as well. That funny enough, your realtors are still going to miss. <laughs> I actually just had that happen the last week or two, Todd, where uh, the seller was not ready. And 
uh, when I got to the appointment, it was a kind of an outlying appointment and the house was just a disaster. And the people were like, well, we're, we're trying to still get ready. And the agent, thankfully the realtor came up and I waited outside and said, Hey, look, the house just is not ready. It's, you know, for professional photos and video, we'll shoot it as is if you'd like us to still do it. But my suggestion would be, we really should reschedule. And he, I said, but I want you to go in and take a look. Let me know what you want us to do. And uh, he went in, he came back out real sheepish. She's like, Craig, I'm so sorry that I brought you all the way out here. Yeah, we had a misunderstanding. They didn't understand. I said, did you happen to get the getting ready guide? He goes, I know you send that and I didn't send it to him. He forgot. So yes, mm -hmm. a getting ready guide is a great tool. Even when they miss it, they, the realtor knew it was on him. We gave the suggestions of what, you know, the house needs to be, uh, what needs to be done in preparation for that professional appointment. But yes, always, always, always have that checklist ready and sent through your system, get it to them, get it in their hands, make sure they understand they need to get that to their client. In Spiro, tell us about that feature where you can even include the seller on. Yeah. So inside of Spiro, and this is just a cool moment where, uh, you know, Craig recognized that it wasn't ready. The agent's like, oh my goodness, I messed up. I didn't get it. This is a point to where, um, you know, we can educate the client. And when you have this, you can educate your client that, hey, you don't even need to send it to your seller. All we have to do is put your homeowner, the seller on the order, and then the system will automatically send them a welcome message that has a link to the Getting Ready website, sets expectations, it lets them know when and the time of their appointment, it lets them know the name of their photographer, mm -hmm. how to repair, the length of their appointment. So it's very important to set proper expectations. They'll get that welcome message. They get a one day before reminder with much of the same information. And then they get an, uh, one appointment before reminder automatically. So this is just a really cool thing that you can give your agents and you it shows that you understand them and the process. And it's, again, it's something that took us nearly two decades to create and figure out but it just works and it shows support for your agents. So now that agent, you know, that Craig talked about, I'm sure he'll put his homeowners on every single time. And then he doesn't even have to worry about forwarding the getting ready guide. Yep. Yeah. And it's funny when, when you do your professional work of preparing the agent and the seller for that appointment with that getting ready guide, they know it's on them. <clears throat> he said, I know there's a reschedule fee. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know there's a reschedule fee. Whatever it is, I, we'll we'll take care of that. I'm sorry I brought you out here. <clears throat> he knew we did our part. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. a, a good client is going to recognize that and, and understand and, and work with it. They won't put it back on you. Yeah, for sure. I, I do just want to point out real quick, because this is another great question, because this is a difficult situation. I just want to make sure, because Craig does a great job at this. But he recognized the house wasn't ready. He had a private conversation with the agent. Yeah, don't do that in front of the know. seller. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't do that in even front of the seller. Even if they know even if they know they're not ready, like don't do it in front of the seller. That seller is not your client. Yeah. Pull the agent aside and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I can shoot it as is." That's our policy. When we show up, if they're not going to be ready in like 5 minutes, you know, we might wiggle to 10 minutes. But if they're not going to be ready, we need to shoot it as is because you know, the next appointments and we don't want to get behind and agents understand that sometimes they're emotional, like the way we started this podcast, but <laughs> that's our policy. It doesn't have to be your policy, but we're firm on that, that we can shoot it as is, or we need to reschedule. And, uh, you know, sometimes it just takes putting your foot down to get a little respect, but I'll also concede the fact to say that there are times that we just recognize as a VIP client, this is a special situation and we need to wait a little bit of time because we don't have another appointment after this. So we do break that rule, but for the most part, we're pretty firm on that mm. rule. Right, right. So we hope that this is helpful today. If you have questions, those were the first five I found online. Hey, it's easy to get questions on the podcast. Just email me, hello at spiro.media. We'll answer your questions. If we don't know them, we're going to find someone that knows it. We're going to get you an answer. There you go. All right. Well, that was that was a fun one. Kind of a little relaxed, but hopefully some good. Well, uh, cha 
change, change it up pace. a pace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But some good information for you. Just, uh, but like Todd said, if you have specific questions that you'd like to see answered, again, email us hello at Spiro.media. All right. Well, that's really, that's going to wrap things up this week. Um, we know everybody's getting busier, you know, uh, especially with, with spring getting around here. So, you might be listening to this, uh, you know, in your car on your drive to your next shoot if you're still shooting, and uh, maybe you're listening or watching in in the office. But we know you got a lot on your plate, so thanks for making the time to again watch or listen to the Spiro podcast. We really do appreciate you, our viewers and our listeners, and just the the great feedback that you provide us. So keep that rolling. Um, we just we appreciate you. I don't know how else to say it. All right, Todd, you have a great week. We'll. Uh, We'll be back next week. And uh, until then, you guys, take a moment. Be thankful for the things that you've been blessed with in your life. Make sure you take a breath this week and have a good week. Take care. Thank you for joining us for the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. This is a production of Spiro and Wow Video Tours. You can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website, spiro.media.